In this video I thought I'd just share my impressions of this machine, the Tascam 688, which is, to my knowledge, by far the most complex cassette multi-track recorder ever made. How do I feel about this unit? Um, kind of kind of conflicted. This is a weird one, right? One of the things that I think is really good about tape multi-track recorders, despite the advent of affordable hard disk recording, digital audio workstations, etc, etc, is the simplicity of using them. A lot of the plumbing, if you like, the assignment of channels to buses and so on, is kind of laid out for you. This one kind of bucks that trend. Now, at the best of times, when you've got a menu where you've got multi-function buttons that you need to use in combination to get into subscreens, I find that not conducive to the creative process. But in my opinion, this interface could have been designed a lot better. Now, not having got this working, I haven't really been able to kind of reap the benefits of the system that this has got, which is basically that you manually assign the channel to the cassette transport, but then there's scenes which are held in memory. And so the idea is once you've got a preferred way of working, you can scroll through the different scenes and that's gonna automatically hook up everything in the mixer to the tape deck. Basically, when this unit came out, I guess it was really expensive. I guess it was a couple of grand, which is like, you know, twice as much, three times as much money in today's money. It was the closest thing to a MIDI-compatible multi-track studio that you could get. And so it's stepping into territory, which I think is covered much better by a digital audio workstation, frankly. The thing about cassette, although I see the limitations of the medium as kind of a strength, you know, in the same way that I like the way the 8mm film footage looks compared to the kind of video that you take with your iPhone, even though that the iPhone footage is higher resolution, I like how cassette sounds. But because you're splitting this tape into eight subsections rather than four, actually the fidelity that you're going to get from any one of these eight tracks is going to be represented by fewer ferrous particles on the surface of your magnetic tape than if you're using a you know, 414. It's just kind of in this like weird middle ground between like all the kind of headache of using a digital audio workstation or a more complex studio setup but without the fidelity or the simplicity or the portability. I mean, the thing's huge. You, I mean, I can carry this myself, but I wouldn't want to do it for any distance. Really, ideally, you'd have one person at each end. In terms of like implementing like the sound of cassette into modern practices of audio production, I don't feel like it makes that much sense. If I was going to do a really complex MIDI arrangement and I wanted a bunch of tracks alongside that, then probably what I would do is use like a... I mean, I've got a decent MIDI interface and... Um, being a new endo user for a long time but you know whatever Ableton, Cakewalk, Reaper whatever it is you're using I would kind of do the arrangement there and then I would dump that onto two channels of say like a, a 488 Mark II which is my preferred 8 track and then I've still got six channels to work with instead of seven and then everything including the MIDI mix is kind of coloured in the same way by the characteristics or technical shortcomings of your snob of the cassette whereas if you're using this even if you're using the MIDI facility you've got quite lo-fi audio lower fidelity audio than if you had a four track alongside the output of midi gear that hasn't been colored by the cassette at all it just seems like a bit of a weird combo but you know i mean it's an impressive beast you know if you've got the space for it and you don't mind the fact that it's really only a shape more portable than having like a, a mixer and a reel-to-reel -reel eight track that might be the thing for you this isn't my final judgment on the machine because at some point i'll i'll try and get this working I'll we'll see how I get on with it. Maybe once I'm actually using it and I've like really broken the back of this user interface where you're combining buttons to assign stuff then saving it in a memory, yuck. Anyway, maybe I'll love that when I really get to grips with it. But it just seems like a bit of an anachronism, you know, it existed in this space where people were transitioning from like bucking against the limitations of working with a four track cassette format, but the whole digital recording thing hadn't arrived yet. So there's a weird set of overlaps and compromises there that don't work for me. We'll see.